It's time! The Devlin Dool Podcast, episode three. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform Simon Dool. International cricket commentator. Just spent the last little bit in Vegas on holiday. We'll talk about that in a second. We're going to be discussing the White Ferns and performing at the T20 Commonwealth Games. Off to a rocket start with a matchup against England tomorrow morning, New Zealand time, as well as that. The All Blacks, of course, in South Africa. Simon with an eye on that, like all New Zealand rugby fans. And top it all off with the Premier League. Starting this weekend, kicks off early on. With Crystal Palace and Arsenal, uh, Liverpool playing. Oh, we can get into that anyway, can't we? Episode three, and we've been absent for a week or two. That's because our man Simon Doyle has been on holiday. Well deserved after. I mean, how many consecutive weeks and months had you been doing the cricket, mate? Uh, gosh, I'd been on basically since the start of the IPL, Marty. So uh, from around about late March right through, um, I hadn't really had a break. So... It was just nice to get a little uh, a little week away, and um, I've just popped over to Las Vegas for yeah, three days, just yeah. to, oh, just to round it off, you know. Look, it's, and, and and for people who haven't been there, this is Toy Town for adults, isn't it, mate? The best thing that I ever did when oh, we first went goodness. to Vegas, we drove in, and about seventy k's out, if you're driving at night, you start to get the lights, and you just stop the car and go, "Wow, look at that!" Yeah, exactly. It's just it is absolutely crazy. I mean, we uh, we flew in. Uh, around about seven o'clock um, in the evening, sort of got to the hotel about eight thirty nine, you know, and you just you have a quick shower and and, and, and you head out and you just go and it, it just comes alive at night. Um, it's been amazing. I've just actually got off a, a Harley, so I've just uh, rented a big big old Harley and we've just been out to the Hoover Dam and oh brilliant. Um, had a bit of a ride around out there. So um, yeah, forty odd degrees though, mate. So it's yeah, not, uh, yeah. It, it's 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 warm. <laughs> Look, the, the time that I've, I've been there a couple of times, I just bore people with this. And the first time was with um, uh, my ex-wife, Andy. And we were in Vegas, in the, and, and it was so hot at that time. I think it was the same time of year. We were walking around, honestly, pouring water bottles on top of our heads and just running to the next yeah. air conditioning building. It, it was like getting a headache outside. That's exactly it. Yeah, it's just you've got to just I don't know, make sure you pour the water into your minute by minute and um, and hope for the best but uh, you're always in search of a little bit of air conditioning when mm. you can find it. <laughs> Let us talk first about the cricket because I know that you've been keeping tabs on our white ferns. Two out of two England are tomorrow morning our time 5am so they've started really well in the T20s but this is the fascinating thing for me Simon is that we were talking with Hayley Jensen yesterday, and and I and I obviously specifically went back to the to the one day World Cup where we did underperform, and it's great to hear the players say that. I know that New Zealand cricket don't like hearing that, but the reality is we did underperform and we did let ourselves down, and they felt that. But what Hayley was saying, she had amazing figures, mate, three for five off four, and she said that the new coach Ben Sawyer, the Aussie guys, come in, simplified things, and got her to swing the ball. And you wanted to see a couple of these poppers she bowled, mate. They were glorious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the key to that is, look, T20 is all about taking wickets up front. If you can put the opposition under pressure, we always talk about three wickets in the first six overs. Inside the power play, you'll win about 75% of your games if you're taking three wickets inside the power play when you're looking to defend. So, you know, so that's a huge key. You put the side under pressure. It's about taking wickets. Now, if you do go for runs, that's fine. Obviously, Haley in that occasion didn't. New Zealand didn't inside that power play. So, that, that's the key, but simplifying things. I mean, we, we do. We turn around and we go. We overcomplicate. So I'm pleased that that, that the girls are starting to sort of, I guess, get the early benefits of what Ben has to offer, and maybe just a little change in attitude. And you know, I was disappointed. I suppose when you when I hear you say, and I've heard it as well, that you New know, Zealand cricket reluctantly reluctant to admit the fact that they had a poor 50 over World Cup. Well, they did. Yeah. It's been awful for a long time. We've talked about this, Marty. New Zealand women's cricket has gone backwards over the last 20 years. Now, they've had the same sort of people in charge, and they've had one person who's been in charge who I saw as smiling mug at the, at the opening ceremony, which I still couldn't believe he was still there. But these things just continue to happen if you keep putting the same people in charge. So it needed a turnaround, it needed a change, and it needed an injection. It also needs what's happening, professionalism. And, and that's a big thing, you know, and I think the girls starting to get paid properly is hugely deserving. Um, so so we'll, we'll hopefully in the next little while, and it may not be this tournament, so let's not get too carried away, yep. but we will in the next two to three, four years, hopefully start to reap the benefits. But the problem with that is we are well and truly behind Australia, well and truly behind England as far as professionals is concerned, and well and truly behind India. 
So we've got a bit of catching up to do. Look, you could hear it in her voice as well. Just the excitement, Simon. That what you know that she is actually like you've given her other tools. It's like a kid in a maths class or something who suddenly unlocks the yeah. you know the the what cosine and sine and tangents and all of that bollocks. But all of a sudden, once <laughs> you understand it. it, you know, and that's what she was saying. Once she understood it, and that's what she wanted to do, and just. Just, I mean, I know that in England, obviously, the ball swings a bit more, but look at the base and reserve, it swings. I mean, you proved that seven for, yeah. you know, and so it's that yeah. technique and having the confidence to be able to do that. And for a coach to come in and within that short space of time, re re-energize, you could feel it in her voice, mate, just reinvigorate these women. Yeah. And probably also, Marty, just um, give them a little bit of, um, you know, self-appraisal as well. Allow them to, you know, to talk to amongst themselves and just say, okay, what are we doing wrong here? What, what do we need to do to do better? Don't just rely on the coach and rely on people who have, you know, have had the same ideas for a long period of time. Actually do a little bit of self-analysis and, and front up and own up. So please that you have said that what she was talking about was, you know, we did have a poor World Cup. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, God, it's, I had many poor days on the field in, in my cricket career. Many, many poor days. You do remember the good ones, but you also have to learn from those poor ones. Learn from your mistakes. And and. I'm, you know, I'm hoping that that's where this New Zealand women's team uh, are going to head in the next little while. I, I really do. Same. And look, Simon, I'll draw the parallel with our, our seven sides who ended up both picking up bronze at the Commonwealth Games. Now, after the women who are Olympic champions lost in the semi, their captain um, said, oh, we, she was gutted. She was absolutely spewing about it. And and then that turned around, you know, because didn't want to play the bronze. I mean, that stinks like the Christchurch sewerage plant. I keep making oh, that joke, but it's it's, 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 the, like, it's it's like kissing your sister. It's the it worst, the yeah. worst thing, isn't it? But after it's that, obviously, obviously, been got to by somebody from New Zealand rugby and turned around after winning the bronze. Say, oh, we're absolutely stoked to get this. And I just know that's rubbish. Yeah. I know that the standards that they set and the men set, mate. It's about winning. It's not about coming to goddamn third. It's it's actually about taking no. the trophy. And it's okay for these people, mm-hmm. these players, to come out afterwards and say to us. Oh, we're gutted about that. Sure, we got a bronze, but it's not good enough for us. That's what they're feeling, and that's what I want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, we didn't come here for bronze. Look, we'll take it. We have to because we weren't good enough to win the gold. Bingo. We'll take it, but Bingo. we don't feel great about it. Yeah. And, and that's what you want. You want, that, you want that raw emotion from our athletes. And, um, you know, I think I thought, I thought that was one of the things we used to get um, a lot more from, from our, our, our top athletes. We used to get a lot more of that. And um, I don't know that we're getting it as no, such we're now. Not. Maybe. No. Is that a consequence of, of the media having a bit more say? Are, are we getting a little bit more battered at the top end from, I mean, the All Blacks have never had more criticism than they've had in the last yeah, true. What, year and a half, two years. Yeah, we'll get on they've to that. never yeah. faced criticism, the All Blacks. Um, so, you know, is, is there something in that? that Look, I think it's a combination, starting mate. Starting to get a little bit more criticised. I think it's a combination of that, just like every government department, every sports organisation, and it starts from high performance sport in New Zealand, employ just a multitude of fluffers and PR people and consultants yeah, yeah. and everything else. And all of these faceless people, the first thing they do is go, oh, damage control, damage control. Look, sport is about exactly. goddamn damage control. That's what it's about. It's about the rawness of saying, yeah. hey, I, it's the same as the All Blacks, mate. No one's bigger critical of them than them. It doesn't matter what we all say, exactly. Simon. I can, I can gob off no. as much as I like, but those guys know more, more than anything, you know, that what they yeah, want to yeah. achieve and that coming second isn't it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, let's talk so, about the know, All Blacks, I mean, mate. You, you do. You, because, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, let's talk about the All Blacks because I know that you're going to go back and you'll be watching this game as well. I love a wounded All Black side. But, gee, Simon, I've never felt so pessimistic, mate, because of the players that we've got, because of the way that South Africa play, because it's on the high belt. And remember, it wasn't that long ago that we put 60 on them at North Harbour, and they will be look, licking their lips looking to do the same, I reckon. Give us a right going. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever gone into all-black games thinking, geez, I'm, I'm not sure we can win. I don't remember the no, last same. time. I mean, and I've, I've been doing it a lot more lately than I've, than I've ever done it. And I, and I don't believe I've ever done it before. But the last few times I've sort of thought, gee, I'm not sure we can win this. Uh, and how do we win it? Are we good enough to win it? And, you know, those are questions that those guys will be asking themselves. And I think when you're down and out, whether they are down and out or not, I'm not, not, not sure, but that is the toughest place to go. I mean, it's, we, we've talked about it previously, Marty. That's the one place I want to go to watch a football match. I mean, yep. Loftus is the place, isn't it, to, to go and watch a, a rugby match and the All Blacks play the Springboks in particular. So uh, they'll be, they will be hurting. Um, and no, and as you said, they are their biggest critics. They will have had... You know, every meeting, every stone, every everything will be overturned and looked at. And, and what do we do? How do we get better? How do we win? How do we beat these guys who are tough? They are tough as old boots. 
the, the South Africans, and, and they will be very, very difficult. Yeah, look, and, and they're the world champions, and we're on the back foot, and and this is what I like about them as well. You know, we've had Cobus Vesa uh, on the program today. They want to put the boot in, mate. They want to kick the hell out of us, put the foot on the throat. And oh, go, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's no nicey yeah. nicies here, you know. So no, if, and, and why would they? Why why would they? Yeah. We've never been in this position. When were, when were the All Blacks or New Zealand rugby last in this sort of position where we were, where are we ranked now? Are we down to third or fourth, fourth in the world mate, now? And should be fifth. We're fourth, fourth and should be fifth. Fourth in the world yeah. and possibly should be fifth. I mean, when have we been in that position never. in the last 20, 25 years? Never. Never That's since they've done the ranking. So no. when, while we are down, and all these other countries that have been through it, England have been down there. Yep. South Africa have been Aussie, down there. Yep. You know, Ireland have been down there. Aussie have been down there. They will be all looking at this New Zealand side and saying, we need to keep kicking. We need to keep kicking. And if they start to squeal, we need to kick a bit That's harder. It. Topic number three, then, on the same parallel as a team that is, well, I mean, I'm looking at the Eng- English Premier League starting, mate, and I, I'll, I'll whisper this to you. I'm thinking sixth. <laughs> oh, how can I say that out loud? How can you how say, can I that? say that out loud? What are you doing? Mate, I, 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 just, I, the, doing? I hate them so much. I hate, I love them. I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> Hey, mind you, you oh guys are celebrating goodness. the Community Shield. I love it, the fact you're only interested in getting the big trophies. Stuff the Premier League, stuff the Champions that's League. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Look, um, I mean, you, you do look, though, Marty, and, and I look every year. And, I mean, I don't I don't follow it as – well, not, not – I don't follow the transfers and the trades as much as I should and used to and probably as much as you do. I, I, um, I'm going to get to go to a game this year, which is Brilliant. nice because I'm in the Brilliant. UK at the start of the season. So I'll head to Anfield and, and watch a game. But I'm – I'm looking at. I'm thinking, how the hell do you beat City? I mean, yeah. how do how does anybody get you over? Know, we've had two of our best ever years, and now 90, 91 points in previous years would have won you just about every Premier League for the last 20, that's 25 it. years. That's it. And, and that's as good as we get. You know, I mean, that's Jack Nicholson for us, Alan Hunt, as good as it gets. Yep. And, and you know, how do we get how do we get past City? Because they just seem to be one step further ahead of everybody, and, and that's the toughest thing in the world. You know, and we've got. I think. I think between City and, and Liverpool, and I hope you don't mind me saying, we've got the two best managers in the English Premier no, League. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And, no doubt. and, and you know, we've just, just got to find a way to get past them. Who does? I don't see anyone. Well, uh, you know, I think that the, the thing you've got going for you this year is both, it was proven last year to both clubs in different ways that, look, Simon, the, there is only, it has only happened four times in the history of English football where a team has won either the Premier League or the First Division and the European Cup or the Champions League in the same season. Twice yeah. Liverpool have done it, twice United have done it. And the reason is because, yeah. as to quote Mark Watson, it's damn hard. It's bloody, you it know, to hard. actually do that. Last year, City sacrificed the Champions League, you'd have to say, won the Premier League. Yes. You, you guys were, you know, almost got to both, but in the end probably stretched yeah. yourself a little too far. So that, to me, is, is, is the big question, is what team decides that what trophy is more important to them? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and when, when in the season do you decide that? Because well, that, you, that was our problem, wasn't it? That was Liverpool's problem. We're, we're so close in both, but you just it seems like it's just a little step too far yeah. in both. So, mm. you know, I mean, and, and years gone by, you know, you go back four years, five years with Liverpool struggling, they'd have taken second of both God and bitten your hand off for it. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So, yeah, and, but we're never happy as a fan, are we? No, never. All right, then, your last night in Vegas, what's the plan? Uh, we're flying out late tonight, so I'm um, just dropping the motorbike off in about an hour. Um, probably head to the casino for one last uh, little punt, and then uh, then go to the airport, jump on the plane, and and back to London. I've got work. The hundred starts in two days, Marty. So I'm straight back into the hundred on the fifth, uh, up in Manchester, Manchester Originals, and then straight down to Cardiff the next day for another one. So looking forward to uh, to that comp kicking off and. Yeah, another month or so in London before I head down to the Caribbean. It's such a terrible time. Don't you think of me, will you? Don't you think of me. 